Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Continuing with the topic of harem being a form of human sacrifice in the Bible, in this video I will respond to Luis Dazan's attempt to explain Jephthah's killing of his daughter in Judges 11 as a tragic and unnecessary act of human sacrifice which Yahweh did not accept. Though Luis spoke very briefly on this, he made several claims which need to be addressed. I'm going to use this time to talk about Judges 11 because Jephthah's vow was brought up, okay? So, first of all, I want to make note that harem language is not used in Judges 11.29, so uh, strictly speaking, if the question is, does harem denote human sacrifice, this passage isn't actually relevant because there's no harem involved here, but since it's been brought up, I think it's worth mentioning altogether. So it has already been mentioned that there's a couple of different ways this passage has been understood. There are some interpreters who say that um, perhaps Jephthah did not actually sacrifice his daughter, but instead consigned her to perpetual virginity. And some notable scholars, such as Kalen Delich, have made this argument, and I think that there is enough ambiguity in the text that you can make a plausible argument for it. However, let's assume the worst and say that Jephthah did indeed sacrifice his daughter. Now, let's make a note of a few things, all right? First of all, <clears throat> just because Jephthah is said to be... Um, have the spirit of the Lord doesn't mean that he is free from all sin, right? So this is a misunderstanding of the biblical view of the spirit. The spirit does not guarantee that the person will be protected from all error. It is still possible while under the spirit of the Lord to, co to commit sins. All right, let's get that out of the way. Second, uh, rem the, if you look, if we understand judges in light of, of Deuteronomistic history, as most um, historical critics would have it, then we should really understand Judges in light of the book of Deuteronomy. And as is already known, Deuteronomy already has a um, prohibition against human sacrifice. So if we read Deuter uh, Judges in light of Deuteronomy, we are actually already meant to understand that this is not correct. Finally, it's worth noting that in the law, there is actually provision for rash vows. So in Leviticus 5 verses 4 through 6, uh, there is a law stating that if someone commit, uh, makes a vow thoughtlessly and then realizes that he has made the vow thoughtlessly, he can, in lieu of, of fulfilling his vow, uh, make an guilt offering to the Lord. Perhaps if Jephthah had been aware of that, he would have done that, but we have no indication that Jephthah is actually aware of all the provisions of the law because he's not only willing to fulfill his rash vow, but also commits sacrifice. I have a lot more points to say, but I'm out of time, so hopefully we'll do that in the following discussion. So Luis made five main points. First, he rightly observed that harem is not specifically mentioned in Judges 11. Second, he said that the text is ambiguous enough to suggest that Jephthah didn't sacrifice his daughter at all. Third, he claimed that a person who has the spirit of the Lord is not necessarily safe from committing sins, and thus it cannot be argued that it was Yahweh who inspired Jephthah to make his tragic vow and sacrifice his daughter. Fourth, Louis suggested that we should read Judges in light of Deuteronomy, due to the general consensus among scholars that books like Judges and Deuteronomy are part of the so-called Deuteronomistic history and were written around the same time. Fifth, Louis claimed that Jephthah could have avoided sacrificing his daughter if he was only aware of Leviticus 5, which allows for atoning for a rash oath and not carrying it out. So let's begin with the first point. Harem is not actually mentioned in Judges 11. This is true. However, that does not mean that Harem, which is a type of vow, cannot be associated with Jephthah's deed. The Hebrew word used in Judges 11.30 for vow is neder. The fact is that a neder, like the Harem, is a type of vow. As Professor Moshe Benowitz explains, harem is a type of dedicatory vow, 
similar to the dedicatory Nader in all respects except that it is irrevocable and unredeemable. But harem can also mean total destruction, usually in the context of war or the annihilation of idolaters. He also explains that it would seem that in all biblical verses but one, harem is used in one sense and one sense only. A harem is a communal dedication to God. It differs from a nadir in that a nadir is a personal vow of dedication made from private property, while a harem is communal property set aside for God. Also, there is a similarity between Jephthah's vow in Judges 11, which was an individual nadir, and the collective vow of the Israelites, which was also a nadir, but in the form of the harem. Both make a vow to Yahweh that if he delivers their enemies to them in battle, they will respond with a violent act. The only difference is Jephthah vows to sacrifice whatever or whoever comes out of his house first, while Israel collectively vows to kill every living thing in Arad's territory. Moving on to point two. Louise claims that there's enough, quote, ambiguity in the text to suggest that Jephthah didn't actually sacrifice his daughter, but rather that she was perhaps made to remain celibate her whole life. But this claim is easily refuted by the plain reading of the text. Judges 11.31 states that Jephthah vowed to sacrifice whatever or whoever came out of his house. And verse 39 states that he did with his daughter as he had vowed. There is no ambiguity at all, unless apologists want to introduce it themselves. The third point was that just because Jephthah had the Spirit of the Lord on him when he made the vow, it does not mean God inspired the vow. Louis claimed that having the Spirit of the Lord did not protect the person from committing sins. Yet here again, a plain reading of the text, indeed the whole book of Judges, seems to suggest otherwise. There is a common theme in Judges about God's Spirit coming on the heroes of Israel and spurring them to perform mighty deeds. We see this in the example of Othniel in Judges 3. And in the case of Gideon in Judges 6. And in the case of Samson in Judges 13. And Judges 14. Again. And again. In the case of each of these men. The Spirit of the Lord drives them to lead Israel to victory and to perform wondrous deeds. Samson is able to tear a lion to pieces and kill hundreds of Philistines by himself. Gideon and Othniel lead Israel to victory in battle, and so does Jephthah. So why is Jephthah the odd man out? Clearly, at least within the book of Judges, the Spirit of the Lord inspires men to do some wonderful deed. In the case of Jephthah, it seems that the Lord inspired him to make this tragic vow and offer up his daughter as a human sacrifice. Point 4 urges us to read Judges in the light of the book of Deuteronomy. Since, as previously mentioned, they were supposedly written around the same time, as part of the so-called Deuteronomistic history. But as I pointed out during the Zoom talk, even Deuteronomy seems to suggest that Yahweh demanded human sacrifices. Since this will be the topic of the next video, we will skip this point for now. Lastly, point number five claimed that the Bible has a law for situations where a person made a rash and foolish oath and needed a way out of fulfilling it. We are told that Jephthah just wasn't aware of Leviticus 5. This seems plausible until we realize that Leviticus 5 discusses oaths, not vows. The Hebrew word in question is Shavuah, not Nader. In Judges 11, verse 30, Jephthah makes a Nader. You might be asking, what's the difference? The answer is that according to the Bible, there is a difference. This can be seen in Numbers 30, for example. Notice that verse 2 
says that a man cannot break his vow, nay dare, and he shall do according to all that proceeds out of his mouth. Only a vow, or nay dare, made by a woman, either when she's living in her father's house, before marriage, or with her husband, can be broken without any sin, if the father or husband annul the vow. Similarly, in Deuteronomy 23, it says that when a vow, or nadir, is made, it must be fulfilled without delay. Notice a similarity in language to Numbers 30. You shall be careful to do what has passed your lips. Compare this to what Jephthah's own daughter said after she found out about her father's tragic vow. Do to me according to what has gone out of your mouth. And Jephthah did just that. He sacrificed his daughter, and there is not a single word of condemnation for it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. وَقُلْ جَاءَ الْحَقُّ وَزَهَقَ الْبَاطِلِ إِنَّ الْبَاطِلَ كَانَ زَهُوقًا